You'll recall from last week that one of the trends we see throughout the Pleistocene, but accelerating at the end of the Pleistocene, is a reduction in adult mortality and associated expansion in human longevity. We start seeing people survive better and associated population expansions going along with that. So we begin seeing this perhaps associated with modern human origins in particular, but in the end of the Pleistocene or after the Pleistocene, when we get the development of agriculture and we get sustained, stable food production, we suddenly begin seeing a massive expansion in population size. The fact that populations are able to reliably predict and control the abundance of food allows populations to persist for a much longer period of time and support larger populations. Being able to provide stable food is particularly important for being able to reduce childhood mortality. The leading cause of death in children is lack of nutrition. So being able to provide stable nutrition for children allows for suddenly a lot more children to reach adulthood. If adults are also dying less, suddenly we're seeing a massive two-fold expansion in population survival, where children are surviving much better, adults are surviving much better, and what we see in this post-Pleistocene time period, beginning around 15 to 10,000 years, is where we have the development of agriculture, we see massive population expansion. Population expansion on a scale not previously seen in humans. And what this leads to is a massive acceleration in how evolution is operating in human populations. Now this might seem counterintuitive. Recall that one of the main ways in which natural selection operates is by differential survivorship, some individuals surviving better than others. If suddenly a larger portion of populations or a larger portion of individuals within a population are all surviving into later adulthood, you would think that might negate the actions of natural selection. But in the contrast, what it's doing is producing a lot more variation for natural selection to act upon. If more individuals are surviving, and every individual carries, say, 100 to 150 unique mutations, suddenly the amount of raw material available for natural selection increases inordinately. So what we see actually when we look at the genomes of individuals today and look for signs of natural selection, especially signs of positive selection, selection for particular novel variants, is we see this process accelerate tremendously over the last 15,000 years and even the last 50,000 years. Indeed, the amount of or number of selected variants out of the genome that have been selected for in the last 50,000 years is probably greater than the number of selected variants in the previous 5 million years the entire period encompassing hominin evolution. The reason for this is larger populations and population expansion. Larger populations mean more raw material for natural selection to act on. And in significant expansions of population size, what we see with the origins of agriculture lead to a massive increase in the amount of natural selection. Or a massive increase, at least, in the raw material available for natural selection. And what we see then, perhaps, in our recent evolutionary past, is a slight change in how natural selection is acting. It's acting more strongly in the sense that there's more material for it to work on, and it might be acting at a more local level. This increase of variation associated with population expansion after the Pleistocene has introduced a lot of new variation, but variation that isn't widely spread across human populations. It's variation that's fairly local at a geographic or even sub-geographic level to regional populations and even to families. And it might allow for natural selection to begin acting on a very fine scale, more of a fine scale than it has throughout the Pleistocene in terms of selecting on specific geographic variants in specific places and acting on them all simultaneously. So evolution hasn't stopped. The population expansion that started really at the beginning of the Pleistocene, accelerated at the end of the Pleistocene, really picked up the pace with the origins of agriculture, and is continuing today, has increased the ability of selection to work on human populations. It's increased the rate at which populations are evolving. Now, it doesn't mean it's a simple process. Again, if we think about the complexity that human populations live in today, how evolution is operating in those populations is certainly not easy to extrapolate. But it's increased in our recent past. The strength of selection has increased in our recent past. The amount of our genome being selected for has increased in our recent past. And all of these are a product of both our changing environment, the fact that we're more readily and more rapidly changing the environment around us, but also we're giving natural selection a huge amount of variation to work on. Each one of us brings something unique to the evolutionary picture. Each one of us carries new variants that haven't existed on the planet before, some of which might be particularly advantageous, some of which might allow for natural selection to act in new and different ways.